Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. Hello, this video is about the allowance for credit losses on receivables. Receivables are the amounts of money that are owed by the firm's customers to the firm for goods or services supplied. Uh, when the firm makes sales on credit, it records receivables in its statement of financial position. Um, and these receivables should be extinguished when the company pays the debt. So when we receive the cash for those receivables, we should cancel that asset. Um, however, Accounting rules require us to recognize that not all customers will pay their debts. The accounting rules in relation to this have become increasingly complex over the years. Um, uh, it used to be governed by IAS 39, now it's governed by IFRS 9, which has a very complex set of rules about how you decide whether um, a company or whether some of your customers are not going to pay or not. And we're not really going to deal with that in this video. Um, we are just going to look at the mechanics of how you um, uh, do the double entry accounting for creating an allowance for um, credit um, losses. If the customer does not pay or there is a risk that they will not pay, then we must record an impairment against uh, uh, the uh, receivable or receivables. So let's say that this company, Dingbat, has discovered that one of its customers has gone into liquidation. The customer owed Dingbat limited 2000 and only 200 is expected to be received from the liquidator. So we will have recorded 2000 as a receivable from the customer. Uh, that's sitting in our balance sheet at 2000. What we now need to do is we need to cancel 1800 of that receivable because it is not going to be uh, received. So how do we do that? Well, here we have the receivables on the statement of financial position at 40,000. And uh, that is a debit balance because receivables are an asset. What we need to do is credit that uh, receivables amount uh, account with 1800 to reduce receivables to 38200. Now, where does the other side of that entry go? Well, the other side of the entry goes into the impairment of uh, uh, receivables expense account in the income statement. So in the income statement, uh, we uh, create an expense, uh, that's a debit item 1800, um, which will reduce our profit for the year. What we're recognizing there is that we in the past, by recognizing the sale, uh, we would have credited revenue, debited receivables with 2000 with the original sale to our customer and uh, we're now recognizing that that sale um, is not going to be paid for and uh, we recognize the profit too soon on that on, on that sale and we now gonna need to cancel out the 1800 um, that was involved in that sale so that would reduce our profit by 1800 from 20,000 before the adjustment to 18,000 200 after the adjustment. Uh, in addition to impairing any individually significant receivables that are not going to be received, the business should look at the large amount of smaller receivables that, that owe the entity money. So you can't just ignore the fact that some people are not going to pay. You're going to have to make some kind of allowance for, you know, the statistical 
idea that some people are not going to pay. And that's what the accounting standards require you to do. And as I say, the rules have become very complex about how you actually do that. Uh, and we're not going to get into those rules. Uh, all we're going to say is that somehow you come up with an allowance uh, for credit losses, uh, AFCL, uh, of 2,100 in uh, 20x4. So um, in this video, we don't get into how where you came up with that figure, but um, we're going to show you how you deal with it in the financial statements. Well, what you do is you create um, a, 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 a credit account allowance for credit losses. It's a kind of a liability, I guess, uh, for of 2,100. And that will be offset against the 42,000 of receivables in your balance sheet, in your statement of financial position. And what happens in the income statement? Well, creating that provision uh, is 2,100 debit. And that is a, a loss, essentially, or a, 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 an expense item in your income statement. So that reduces your profit. So what we're saying here is that we expect we're going to make some credit losses in the future. We are making provision for those and taking the expense of those losses in advance of actually knowing which uh um uh debtors or receivables are going to not pay us um uh yeah so we reduce our profits and uh the the summary of this area is that receivables must be impaired for amounts that will not be received an allowance for credit losses should be established for losses from groups of uh, receivables and that is done by assessing how risky your receivables are and you know using statistical data to work out who didn't pay us in the past and making some uh, kind of estimate from that. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.